Welcome guys to my home studio. Um, last week you did a value scale using just a number two wooden pencil and we're going to do the same thing this week but we're going to use temper paint instead. So I wanted to show you a few things that you're going to need to get started. First off, I've made a copy of the value scale just like you used last week uh, with the pencil but I've put it on a little bit better quality paper. Um, when water gets on paper it makes it buckle and get all wrinkly and stuff and hopefully this better quality paper will prevent that from happening. <laughs> so first thing you definitely need to do is put your name on it. The supplies that you're going to need is a cup of water, a paper plate with um, a large amount of white paint and a small amount of black paint. You're going to need a paper towel and one or two brushes depending on how many I have for the class to share. Um, so. We've got a couple of different types of brushes. These are called round brushes because their tips are rounded. And then we have flat brushes and because they are flat. It's kind of a personal preference or depends on what you're doing and which type of brush you want. So you can experiment and uh, trade with your neighbors and see which kind of brush you like the best. Um, so the first thing we want to do is make sure your brush is clean. Uh, swirling it in the water back and forth. Don't scrub it into the um, container, just kind of swirl. Wipe it on the edge of your uh, water cup. And then you're going to use a paper towel to squeeze the water out. Don't scrub it on the paper towel, just gently squeeze it out. Um, with temper paint, you don't want a lot of water in your brush because it's going to dilute the paint and make it not look so good. All right. So just like last week, we have white in the first box and black in the uh, last box. So let's paint white first. Yes, we're going to paint white paint on white paper. So I loaded the brush with a little bit of paint. Um, this metal part, um, we don't want to get paint all the way up to the metal part. So make sure you just get it on the tip of the brush. Um, some things to think about. Um, you want to treat your paintbrush like she's a delicate ballerina. Don't be rough with her. Don't scrub with her. Don't push down. You want to keep her on her toes and gently sweep back and forth. We're trying to fill all the way up to the line. We want to stay inside of the lines. So take your time and make it look nice and even. There's a lot of paint built up right here. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but we can use that to help smooth the paint across the box. We'll be able to see this better when we start making our shades of gray. So I've only loaded my brush twice because I can make this paint go pretty far. So we don't want to use too much paint because it'll take forever to dry. Um, to get on this side, I'm going to turn my paper. I'm going to load the brush again with just a little bit of paint. And going right up to the edge. Um, you girls, you know how to paint your fingernails and it's like nice even strokes. Kind of the same thing with uh, painting. It's not to say boys you can't figure this out and do a good job at it though. So going right up to the edge, get in that corner nice and careful and then just go over the whole thing and just make sure your paint is nice and smooth. All right, I don't have a lot of paint left in my brush. If I did, I could kind of scrape it off into back onto the paper plate, the palette. I'm gonna clean my brush by swirling it out over here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paint black down in the last box. All right, notice how I'm scraping the brush along the top edge of the cup and gentle squeeze. All right, let's go to the black. Just get a little bit on your brush and try to get into the corner. There we go, so now I have white and I have black. I'm clean the brush out again. Be careful not to tip the water bowl over. Scrape it along the edge, get all the extra water out of it, and then squeeze out the water. Remember why I told you 
We want to squeeze the water out of our brush because water makes temper paint look bad. Okay, now we need to start making the very lightest shade of gray that we possibly can. So we're gonna scoop over a good amount of white. I'm kind of rolling my brush to get all the extra paint off. And I don't want to contaminate my black, so I'm going to clean the brush out again. All right, squeeze that brush out. Bring it back up to a nice point. Still got a little white paint on there. There we go. All right, now for light gray, let's just say if white and black got into a fight, black is going to win because it's a much stronger, uh, stronger color. It has more pigment in it. So we just want a teeny tiny amount of black to start with. Look how little that is. Just a little bitty bit on the end of the brush. And we're gonna put it into this amount of white and swirl it around. All right, so that wasn't quite enough, but it's better to start out too light and realize it than to go too dark and try to tone it back down. All right, I made a mistake. When I clean my brush, I should have. I'm gonna go ahead and move some black over so I can touch into it later. So I don't contaminate my, my first amount of black. Okay, let's try that again. Dry the brush out good. We're gonna get just a little, another little dab of black, just another small amount and swirl it together. All right, I'm not seeing enough of a difference I'm new to this kind of black temper paint, this brand. It's a little bit cheaper. It's not quite as strong as I'm used to. Okay, let's try that amount. Swirl it around. Okay, I think I've got a good light shade of gray. We're gonna paint this down and see if it's enough of a difference. So if I go right next to that white, I can see just enough of a difference. All right. Okay, so there's my light gray. All right, now I'm ready to make my perfect shade of gray, a good in-betweeny gray. So clean my brush out. Let's get another scoop of white. All right. Swirl that brush around. Notice how it's getting on the, on the metal part. That's all goopy and nasty and that can make a mess later. So we want to avoid getting too much paint on that metal part. Keep it on the toes of the bristles as much as you can. All right, I still have some white paint, but I'm gonna get that with the paper towel. Squeeze gently, don't scrub. Be nice to the paint brushes. Okay, let's get a little more black. We're gonna be a little more aggressive with it this time. Look how much black I've gotten this time. And we're gonna swirl it into our new little pot of white. All right. That's a good shade of gray, but I'm gonna bump it up even more so that we can see a bigger difference between, so that we have, we have uh, It'll be darker for the next one. We wanna make even steps between white, light gray, gray, and dark gray and black. I feel like I need more. All right, here I go doing something I didn't wanna do, contaminating my, my black. There we go. Swirl it in there. I'm trying to push it all toward the center of the pile of paint. Okay. Swirl it around. Nice, even color. And let's brush this down. There we go. Okay. All right. We're going to clean that brush out and we're going to try to make a nice dark shade of gray. It's going to be pretty dark because I want it to be similar to the black, but not quite that black. And that brush out again, drying it nice and neatly and sweetly. Be sweet to the brushes. Okay, so here we go with our scoop of white and a pretty aggressive amount of black. Look at that pile of black paint. Almost 50 50. 50% 50 white, 50% black. 
All right, I think I need to bump it up a little bit more so it's more even jump from white to black. From, yeah, from the gray to the dark gray. So I could have been a little more aggressive with our changes in grays and gotten you to do a 10 scale where we had white being one, 10 being black, and you had to come up with eight different shades in between. But we just went with five. Okay. While I like this, I like those shades of gray, as it's drying, it's starting to get too similar. So I kind of feel like I should do this over again. Because I've got nice even gradation between these three, but it's still a big jump to the dark, to the black. Hmm, what to do, what to do. See, even art teachers make mistakes. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to make my black into just a darker gray. All right, that might be too dark. Get some white. Nope, more black. All right, so I changed it up a little bit. We've got white, light gray, gray, dark gray, and then we're gonna call this even darker gray. Really dark gray instead of black. All right, but if I was to look at this from a distance, I'd be pretty happy with my ombre, the even change between the um, shades. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'm going to just paint a couple of other samples and give you some photographs of them using uh, some different techniques, and you'll be able to view those later.